is sustainable investing anywho? Uh, yeah, it's a topic. I've heard a lot of buzzwords. If you haven't been living under a rock, you know that um, sustainable, equitable resources and things that we have had lots of conversation about over the last several years, but even more recently when we see a movement. And I think in all honesty, because people have been home and have been having the ability to have more conversations around this. So thank you all for joining. Uh, if you can, do me a favor in the comments below. Let me know what you know when it comes to sustainable investing or what questions you have so that I can answer them throughout this conversation today. And if you're listening back, because we're going to share this later, uh, please feel free to email us with any questions that you might have. What is sustainable investing? So I wanted to make sure that we chatted through what this is real quick. And I've got some notes prepared so that we can really drive into this. So sustainable investing in my world is usually referred to as ESG. So what does that mean? Environmental, social, and government. So when you think of environmental, uh, my computer sounds like it's gonna like rocket ship off. So hang on, let me close a couple windows here. Oh, that is not the window I wanted to close though. Um, so when we think of environmental, we wanted to think of it in terms of climate change, carbon emissions, air, water pollution, deforestation, energy efficiency, waste management, water scarcity. So those are the issues that we're talking about around that. When we talk about social issues, we're talking about data protection, gender and diversity, employment engagement, employee engagement, community relations, human rights, labor standards. And governments would be around the company. So board composition, what is their audit structure? How do they plan for and make sure that bribery and corruption don't exist within their company? What does their executive compensation package look like in comparison to maybe the other leaders in the organization or even some of those individuals who are not in leadership positions? How are they lobbying? Excuse me, how are they making political contributions? And then what is their standards around whistleblowers as well? So all of those things seem like topics of conversation that we've talked about a lot lately, right? Now, this might be something that you didn't even know was available because I think a lot of times for investors, we expect someone like myself or someone even in your HR department who helps you sign up for your 401k to give you insights around what investments you should pick. You can actually go out, um, I'll leave some links either in the notes below or uh, if you subscribe to our email list, I'll be sending some uh, pieces of information out around this topic. You can look for those respons responsible companies that align with your values. So maybe a couple of these topics are things that you're super uber passionate about, right? So maybe it's um, gender and diversity. Maybe for you, it's human rights. Maybe for you, it's um, you know water and air pollution. What companies are aligned with you. There's actually what's called an ESG rating that goes with each company. Now, what I want you to understand is in the past, a lot of advisors, so if you sit down with an advisor that's maybe doing this for a long time and doesn't have a specific focus with ESG, they're gonna tell you that ESG is a poor performing vehicle for you to invest in. And these aren't vehicles like you just go pick ESG. They're companies that apply to have this rating. So these are large companies that you might have heard of that have gotten the certification or rating around ESG. So essentially, this isn't just like a made up thing. It actually exists and is something that's important for us to consider. I'll get to why I think that that's so important. And there's like substantial research this year that actually shows that. So in the past, like in the 70s, when social responsible 
SRI, ESG type investing came out. Social responsible investing, environmentally social governance investing. So those are like what they might be referred to as. They weren't as well performing as going into the standard, you know, market type of mutual funds that follow with the market, right? And mainly because there weren't laws and regulations around companies having to apply these tactics and then they, they don't have similar returns. Now we have more laws and regulations around companies that are actually Fortune 500 companies that still provide you a great return as an investor, but also follow in line with what your beliefs are. And I've shared this a lot. Now, this could be a topic that is important to you, and this could be a topic that you're like, I'm just learning something about. But if you truly are on this journey of equity and sustainability for the future, then you need to understand how it affects your finances. And I don't mean just like, okay, I'm gonna buy like the, you know, clean diapers for my kid, or I'm going to make sure that we have, you know, a minimalist type of lifestyle. We don't buy a lot of excess things. I'm going to eat organically. Um, I'm going to donate to these types of nonprofits. No, I'm talking about like literally how do your investments grow? So are you investing in companies that are supporting your beliefs and what is important to you. In the past, you couldn't do this and have a solid return. Now I want you to fast forward to 2020. Does anybody remember what happened in March? So the market declined in March. Um, we're not quite back up to where we were at the beginning of the year, but we are significantly up from where we were in March. Now, traditional if you looked at like maybe like an index fund and you were invested in that in March, chances are you saw a huge decline and maybe got a little scared and maybe like some pulled your money out, which as you know, I do not advise that. I think that it's something super important to stay invested for a long period of time. Hello, thank you, Warren Buffett. No, but I like in all honesty, like how do you take the steps forward? Well, guess what? Sustainable investing in comparison to like an index fund actually did better in March. Why might that be, Shannon? Well, if you think of it, in traditional investing, there was a lot of energy companies who didn't do so hot in March. Guess what usually isn't included in socially responsible investing? Traditional types of energy companies. Instead, there's going to be more solar, more green energy that are a part of those portfolios. So in times like we are starting to transition and experience, as there is a social movement forward, how are your investments aligned with your beliefs? So there's a huge amount of information that's out there that you could like literally, well, there, I, I love it, it's, I geek out over it, right? But what I want you to understand, and especially as younger generations come into the space with money, 86% of millennials who were surveyed cared about where their money was invested. So I see a lot of people who sit on the sidelines in distrust of investing into the bigger world of investing, right? I hear it all the time, like the stock market is owned by like the filthy rich, why should I invest in that space if it doesn't align with who I am? Uh, well, because we still want you to make wealth and we still want you to move forward because guess what? Money does help us make change and you can do that in a way that aligns with your values and what is important to you. So. There is a whole rating system that a company would go through in order to qualify this. Now you are seeing more and more, rather than you as the end investor, having to go out and figure out what stocks should I pick? And Shannon, are you kidding me? Like, I have to go through this like whole, like is the company certified? I have to look them up. Like, I don't wanna do that. Like, I want somebody else to do that for me. I just wanna tell you like, hey, I don't like this stuff and my values really align over here, can you help me create a portfolio that like sustains that? Yes, we can. Like now 
There are literal portfolio managers, knock, knock, knock. I've been saying this for a couple of generations, but they just called me a hippie. Um, like knock, knock, like now they're actually looking at this and saying, wow, we can have great returns and do good with our money. So what I want you to, th to think about is when you, when you sit down and start aligning yourself with, okay, this year, 2020, I am finding myself at a space where I want to do better. I want to do better with my life. I want to make a greater impact in the world. I want to understand our history that wasn't just taught to me in a, in a you know textbook. I really want to understand the things that are, are happening in the world and how do I positively affect change? Maybe you're a parent. Maybe you wanna know, like for me, I wanna know that my kids are gonna have the next generation that's like really great. Also, like this isn't like a partisan issue, you guys. This is like, how do we sustain and how do we have equity in order to like move forward? It's a humanitarian issue, not a partisan issue. So let's not create division in this conversation. Instead, let's be able to come back to the table and say, okay, these are things that are important to me. And how do I make sure at the end of the day, the dollars that I'm putting into my 401k or my retirement or my investments outside of my retirement account really fall in line with who I am and what's important to me. So a lot of times when a client sits down with me, I say, okay, let's talk about your values, your beliefs, and your vision. Well, I thought you were just going to tell me what I should be invested in. Yeah. I need to understand what your values, beliefs, and your vision are in order to be able to understand where we move forward with what type of investments. Then we need to define what your goals are, what your risk tolerance is, what you feel comfortable with. And maybe you don't feel comfortable with taking the yo-yo ride of the market. So then we have to go look at different options. And then if you're comfortable with being in the market, okay, so then let's pick companies that you might be more aligned with from a values perspective. And believe it or not, there are a lot more companies out there than we think. In fact, there's a certification out there that companies can go out and get, and it's a hope of mine that Forethought will be that someday, um, but it is a long process to go through, and we're definitely working towards that. But you can certify yourself as a B Corporation, and what that does is it actually makes you stand out in terms of your competition on what you are doing around sustainability. So when you're spending your money, think about where you're spending your money with, um, if at all possible, can you send, spend them with B corporations or small companies who are trying to you know, make better for themselves? Um, that's a great space to start spending your money. When you're growing your money and investing your money, you want a lot of stability. And that's where, um, and stability is a, a word that we use as a, a categorization to to align with our emotions like we don't want to lose right but we want to gain well guess what like at some point you're going to lose and gain because you're invested in the market just how much does that fluctuate and how much does that change so as we look at this going forward aligning yourself with a portfolio that does that are you the one that wants to make those decisions or do you want to utilize a professional in order to do that for you? The same as I've always kind of talked about, you can do that. And you can do that with ESG investing. Uh, just think of it as like, in social responsible investing and ESG investing is literally like you growing your wealth, except for now you're doing it in a responsible fashion that aligns with your values. How do you create a greater impact in the world than by what you're doing with your wealth? So think of it as this simple aspect. When you go to invest, and most people are invested in mutual funds, like most of like the general public is invested in mutual funds, and some are invest invested in you know, stocks, individual stocks. But let's say you go and you buy a mutual fund. And you just do it yourself. So you go to Fidelity or Schwab or wherever and you pick a mutual fund. Most of the time you just look at their past performance and you're like, oh, that looks good. I'm going to pick that one, right? And so you do that. 
and you kind of just let it ride and you let it grow and you set it aside and you kind of forget about it. So now you have, let's say, you put in $500 and now you have $10,000. So you have all of this growth. What is it that those companies did in order to help you grow? How did that affect the other things that are in your life? So money is tied to everything. If you follow me, you've heard me say that before. So what did that, what did that company do or multiple companies if you're invested in a mutual fund a mutual fund for those of you who are new to the investment game totally cool just gonna pause and break that down for you a mutual fund think of it as like a basket of multiple stocks or bonds invested in one little space somebody else makes the decisions for you you invest in that now they don't know any like they don't know you or from you know jane down the street it's just that um, they're making those investment choices and decisions, not based on you, based on the fund allocations. So you've got this mutual fund and it's grown for you. But what has that company done in order to create that growth? Has those decisions that that company has made align with what yours are? So. Do they pay their, you know, if, if, if wage and uh, diversity and gender are important to you, are those companies paying equal wages? What are their hiring practices? What are they doing within their organization to support that? Now you just invested in a company that totally doesn't align with who you are. Now you have a lot of money. So are you gonna turn around and say, Okay, well, I'm just gonna like donate this money back. Most people don't end up doing that. And that's kind of an old school manner. Like just let your, let your money grow and then you, know, you can just write a check and that'll make you feel better. Well, what if we just actually challenged companies to do better because we used our dollar as power? So I want you to think on that. If you, use your dollar as power when it comes to sustainable investing and chose companies because when you buy in whether it's a mutual fund or a stock you give that company money to grow and do good or grow and make profit essentially with esg investing you want them to do both doesn't have to be this or conversation that we've had for so long. Like, well, you know, either you choose to do things right and then like don't have returns, so you should just write a check, or you, you know, over here invest and like maybe we'll write a check and feel good about it later. So I want you to think about that in perspective of like how to go forward. Also, like while these companies are out doing different things, some of those portfolios that I told you that are aligned, right? Some of those actual portfolios, the gains from those portfolios go into communities that might need more. So when you went to go write that check because you invested in something over here and you want to feel better about yourself, so you're going to run like, write like maybe a $100 $200 check. Whereas if you were invested and multiple other people were invested and now that portfolio is gained, what check is going to be bigger? The one that you donate or the one that multiple people do? How is that going to make a difference within those communities? So there's just like so many different pieces that we could break down and talk about when it comes to sustainable investing, but I don't hear a lot of people talking about it. And in fact, in March, I didn't hear a lot of people talking about the aspect that they didn't see as much of a downturn as the rest of the market. And I think it's important for us to have a conversation around this because again, you guys, it, I see statistics, for instance, like I, I told you before, 75% of, or excuse me, 
of millennials in this survey given by Morgan Stanley said that they would prefer to have sustainable investing. 82% of people said that they want their investments to reflect their values. So this is something we want. It doesn't matter what side of the aisle you sit on. We just want things that are going to align with what's important to us, right? So how do you find those types of investing vehicles in order to do that? Well, if you don't want to do this yourself, there is an element for you to be able to have a conversation with a financial advisor. If you are investing in your 401k, what I would urge you to do, um, especially if you're at a large company, start asking the questions of what options are available in our 401k for us to invest responsibly aligned with our values. Maybe, um, especially large companies like Target, General Mills, Best Buy, my past employer, BMO, Wells Fargo, although I don't necessarily want to align myself with them right now, but like all of these big companies are coming out and saying and making statements around what they're doing to progress things forward, right? That's fantastic. Also, as employees, I want you to go out and say, okay, well, what else are we doing? What else are the options, like where we put our money? Not just from like a donation if you participate in United Way, but what are the options that we have within our 401k or retirement options? Great conversations to be able to have with your HR person if you want some talking spaces or notes to go into those conversations. I'd be happy to give them to you. If you're looking to invest outside of your retirement and or have old past retirement accounts and you want to make them into alignment with your values. Let's have a conversation. If you already have an advisor, this is a great space for you to start a conversation and understand what other options are out there. And, you know, maybe ask the question like why wasn't this an option or a discussion that we had previously? That being said, again like I I said previously, this hasn't been a huge topic in our industry because most advisors of the past just thought you couldn't do it and have a rate of return. And why as an advisor would I want you to sit down with me for your annual meeting and you not have a great rate of return on your money, right? Like a lot of people focused back to rate of return. And I think that that's where we have to incorporate the financial planning process into your life. So it is not just the rate of return, although you're not going to sacrifice that if you use social responsible investing. Now understand what do you need your portfolio to do for you based on your goals and based on what's important to you. If you have an alignment with financial planning, then you can designate, okay, what part of our portfolio is going to be doing this for us? What part of our portfolio is going to be doing this? You can X, Y, Z out your portfolio to figure out what it is going to be doing. And maybe the sustainable part of your portfolio isn't everything. Maybe it's just a portion. Maybe it is everything. I have some clients who come to me and are like, uh-uh, I don't want any of this, 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 or this. And then we have to you know, get creative and figure out what other options are out there for us. But that being said, I want you to feel empowered that this is a decision that you get to make and there are tons of options out there that most advisors would be able to offer you. And if you want to have a further conversation about what this looks like for you, I'm happy to schedule some time to chat with you about it and have a further conversation and even look at some options for you around what this looks like. I will say you need to understand that with any type of investing, nothing is guaranteed. And there's always gonna be risk associated with any type of investing. Just because you're socially responsible doesn't mean that there isn't going to be risk with your portfolio. And, um, and I think oftentimes we think like, oh, if we align with our values and our vision, we're not gonna have that level of fluctuation. And it is true. Um, depending on what laws get signed into place, um, that could affect what that looks like. And so that's, again, why it's so important to completely revisit, at least at a bare minimum on an annual basis, what is happening in your life, what is happening in the world, how does that affect your overall plan, and should you be making any changes to the plan and or your portfolio. I hope that this was 
at least somewhat educational for you when we start to talk about environmental, social, and governance when it is aligned with your portfolio, how important it is to at least explore it as an option for you to understand that it is out that, that, that it's out there and it's an option for you to consider when it comes to investing. So uh, I will pause just for a second to see if anybody has any questions who's joining us live. And then um, if not, um, I will I will leave you with a bit of pieces of information for you. All right, well, I want you to think about it in this, driving factors for sustainable investing. Future, future decision makers, Gen Z and millennials are asking for more companies who are seeking sustainable investment solutions. So if we have Gen Z and millennials who combined are more individuals alive than baby boomers, what could we do to actually change the world? Just sit with that for a second. If we really wanna change, absolutely we need advocacy in all types of roles. We need them in our lawmakers, we need them in our schools, we need them in our jobs. And then we also need to be doing work at home and having the conversations and that looks like, what are we consuming? Where are we attending? Who are our friends? And then what is our money doing for us? And if you are really dedicated to this element of change, like I have seen so many people have conversations around, again, this isn't a partisan issue. This is an issue of us sustaining our future, working together, and having a conversation. And there's no better way to start doing that than aligning your values, your vision, and looking at what your money is doing for you in comparison to all of those things. So I hope today was helpful. As always, you are so worthy of wealth. If you have any questions, please reach out to me, as well as feel free to schedule a wealth assessment. All you have to do is go to forethoughtplanning.com backslash wealth assessment and schedule your free 30 minute session with me. So you can ask me literally any question you want to. I might not always have the answers, but I'm willing to go search for them because guess what? None of us have all of the answers and that's okay. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Thrive Forward, a podcast for you about finances, health, and mindset. Please share with somebody that you think might find this of value, as well as subscribe so you don't miss any of our episodes that we update every week for you. You can even find us on social media, on our Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube channels, all at Forethought Planning. Thank you again. And remember, you are always worthy of creating your wealth. The views expressed here are those of the participants and not those of Forethought Planning, Advisors Pied, or LPL Financial. All investing involves risk, including loss of principal. No strategy assures success or protects against loss. Securities are offered through LPL Financial and member of FINRA and the SIPC. Advisory services offered through Advisors Pride, an SEC registered investment advisor. LPL Financial, Advisors Pride, Forethought Planning, and the guests of the Thrive Forward podcast are separate and unaffiliated parties.